Hi, I'm Greg Downey. I am a faculty member here at UW-Madison. I've been here for about 17 years now. Uh, I'm in the School of Library and Information Studies and the School of Journalism and Mass Communication, but that's not what I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, this is a course that I've been teaching more recently uh, in a role affiliated with the College of Letters and Science, um, dealing with their career initiative. And all the schools and colleges around campus have career services offices and uh, uh, career advising and career resources for students as they transition from being a student to, to being away from UW-Madison and whatever the post-graduation plans are, right? They're working in the for-profit sector, non-profit sector, the government, grad school. And uh, Dean Carl Schultz of the College of Letters and Science, when he uh, came in about four years ago, decided to um, try something new and do a college-wide initiative that would really try to link together the career services, expertise, and resources, and the idea of an office that students can find and go to with more kinds of uh, activities, resources, programming, tools uh, that, that would suffuse the student experience um, from their first year to their final year here. So there's residential learning communities, um, uh, doing new things with career fairs and job fairs, and, and working uh, very closely with departments. Many of you have probably uh, worked with this. One of the aspects of this is a new course. And so it was my pleasure to be um, kind of one of the people who helped get this course going. And I've, I've been the faculty member who's been leading this course for the last uh, couple of semesters. I think this is the fifth semester now we've been doing this course. So really only the two and a half years we've been playing around with this. Um, so that's the course I want to talk to you about, and, it, and I think you'll agree it poses some, some interesting design challenges, and uh, this is the second semester I've been using Canvas with this course to try to address some of those challenges. So has anyone heard of this course? It's called Taking Initiative. A couple people? Okay. So if you haven't heard of it, now you have spread the word to students, not just if you're affiliated or connected to the College of Letters and Science, but anywhere around campus. This is a course. Here's, here's the capsule point of this course. It's a one credit course. Um, and I'll show you how to find it here as I, as I talk about it. Instead of just going into my dashboard and my courses and finding it through Canvas, we make this course visible to the whole universe, actually. And so if you were in Canvas, canvas.wisc.edu, and you go to courses over here on the left-hand side, and you scroll down after all of your courses, and you find the little All Courses link, uh, and it shows sort of all of your courses that you've ever had or ever will have, uh, your life flashing before your eyes. You can go over here and click Browse More Courses. And this is kind of fun because you see all of the courses uh, from UW that have been made available in a more public way. Um, and I believe what you see here when you're sort of logged in as a UW person is all the UW available courses plus publicly available courses. And our course is publicly available. And it's called um, uh, uh, LNS Career Development Taking Initiative. So there's a fall version, and there should be the spring version as well, which, oh, look, the first fail of my demo. The spring version is not showing up here. That's OK. But you should be able to find it here. I'm going to go and find it um, on my list of courses from my dashboard. Um, here it is, Taking Initiative, spring 2017. So our idea is that we make this visible to everyone. And um, so as I sort of show the splash page here, let me tell you what the point of this course is. It's a one credit course, as I mentioned. We want to make it easy for students to be able to add this course in with everything else they're doing. Um, but we pack a lot into that one credit. Um, it's, students approach a course that says career preparation on it by thinking, oh, they're going to help me build a resume. And sure enough, we do talk about resumes and things like that. Um, students who are, are a little more tech savvy and, and realize the social media landscape and the connections to job seeking and career building uh, also figured they're probably going to have us do something like LinkedIn. Sure enough, we use LinkedIn uh, and show students how to build a social media presence connected to career aspirations rather than Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Um, but really, those two are kind of the MacGuffins to get students into the course. What the course ends up really being about is uh, their time here. It's about being a student at a major public research university, being a student in a college of letters and science, being a student where no matter what their major and what their specialty and their interests, they're going to experience a breadth of instructional opportunities and extracurricular opportunities from the arts and humanities to the social sciences to the sciences, internships and student organizations and service learning opportunities, study abroad opportunities, um, you name it, right? And so we try to pull all of these different student experiences and student possibilities from their university life into a language 
of talking about how that prepares them for a career. Again, no matter what their, what their major. And again, one of the lessons that we try to impart is that um, your major is not the same as your career. Uh, take one of my departments, journalism and mass communication. Not everyone who graduates from that department goes on to be a journalist or to work in a, in a, a job title that would be called strategic communication or work for a communication or media firm. Um, folks work in all kinds of different fields. Folks, we have a great slide we use in the course of recent graduates from the philosophy department. And there's two dozen different careers and, and, and sort of professions that our philosophy undergraduates um, enter into, right? And so we really try to bring forth all the different possibilities that students can uh, encounter after their time here. And then so how to make the most of their time here to prepare them for those possibilities and connect those languages. Languages of things they've done here with languages of what employers expect. So it's sounding like a lot for a one credit course. Um, there's a lot to talk about. And we're trying to be efficient with students' time. And we're also trying to mobilize a lot of different interests into this course. So I mentioned the career initiative involves career advisors and departments, faculty and staff. One way to design this course would have been to say, uh, it's going to be the standard lecture discussion course. I'll be the professor. I'll do lectures. And then there will be discussions as well. Well, we don't have the time and the space to do that in a standard way. So we, we started from that basis. So I do some lectures. Over the 15-week semester, there's about five lectures where I bring all 150 students into a big room and we have a community and we can kind of do the big show. The other 10 uh, weeks are in small discussion sections. And we have traditional graduate student TAs who bring their own work experience and their own uh, educational experience into the classroom and mentor our students through assignments. And those are reflection assignments and peer writing assignments and uh, peer review assignments and building those resumes and LinkedIn sites, building a professional presence being able to stand up in front of people and give a one, to, one minute to two minute introductory speech, all those kinds of assignments that you might expect. So Professor TA, we also have uh, those career advisors from all across campus coming in and helping us in the course. So each discussion section besides the TA has a professional career advisor, we call them our career mentors, uh, who basically volunteer their time, a UW staff member volunteers to sit in with one of those sections, to have an expert in the room to talk about career resources on campus and just more stories about you know, how they've seen students negotiate campus and negotiate the first couple years of their career. And that's not all. You also get a set of Ginsu knives. No, the other thing you get <laughs> is access to alums. Because one of the greatest resources for career building of our students is 200,000 alumni out there doing great things in the world in all kinds of different professions all around the globe. And we want to show our students, one, how to connect with these folks, but to bring some of those experiences and that expertise back for our students. So students can hear firsthand, um, well, you know, I did this when I was on campus, and it really set me up to, to work in this field, in this kind of career, in this kind of job, in a way I didn't expect then, but makes total sense now when I look back on it five years later, 10 years later. We want students to hear those stories now and engage alumni into this process um, and, and kind of close that circle. So this is a lot of different groups that are plugging into this course. So organization of this material and figuring out what needs to be online, what needs to be in person, what needs to be in lecture, what needs to be in discussion, how to you know, have one-stop shopping so everyone knows what's happening each week, when and where and why, is really crucial. We've got a lot of information and a lot of theory and concepts behind the ideas of, of career development that we just can't get to in a one credit course. But we want to show the students that it's there and we want to make it available in the future so they can come back semester later, semester later, semester later and still have access to some of this information. So those are a lot of the challenges. So Canvas allowed us, number one, to create a course um, uh, that we could open up a little more than usual. And number two, to use some, more, some new sort of um, organizational techniques from the previous iteration of this course that we had used D2L, so we had used Desire to Learn, um, just the Learn at UW system uh, in a previous online version of this. So here's basically what it looks like. Uh, and uh, instead of, let's see, I could go into student view on this. Maybe that's the best way to do this. Let's go into, um, yeah, maybe, I'll just, maybe I'll just leave it like this so we can do a little editing if we have to on the way through. But um, students basically uh, engage with the course probably in three main ways. So when they get to the site and they read through the splash page in the first week, they're probably never going to come back to the splash page again. 
The splash page has a lot of links to sort of syllabus-like information, like textbooks, learning outcomes, the grading scheme, all that kind of stuff. And we hope the students read through that the first time. Um, but we don't really expect that they're you know, moving through these hyperlinks through all that text. That's sort of like their, their syllabus document. We expect they're using the navigation on the side. So a couple of ways to get through that. So the modules, all Canvas courses can be arranged in these modules. And this is logical organization. And uh, a good choice we found for this is to also bring logical and chronological organization to this. So the modules, things happen in order. So there's things that happen beforehand. We actually, we're bringing so many people together, the courses for the instructors as well, and the career mentors and the alumni to figure out what's going on. So we have some things that aren't published right now that are things like instructor guides and instructor uh, 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 orientation sessions. We have all of our about the course pages here. And then we start into the meat of the course. The first week, a lecture. Lecture, and the titles on this, Boy, I agonize over the little titles even of everything because I want to make it clear at every step, whenever these titles pop up in different parts of Canvas, what students are looking at and what the ordering is. So lecture number one of five, introduction to the course, and then some resources there. The, the resources are, uh, if you've used Canvas before, these are just little uh, wiki pages, uh, page-based resources, and some of them are file-based resources. So after lecture number one, if I click into one of these pages, right, there's some information about me, and they can pop right back into the module screen after reading that. After the lecture, they can actually see the PDF of the lecture slides that I showed. Um, those will pop up in a second. Fifty-three slides uh, for 50 minutes. Boy, that's a lot of information. But anyway, so all the information gets loaded up in here, and it's organized by module, right? And I mentioned that we only have one hour a week in this class. It's a one credit class, and we alternate between lecture and discussion. So the second thing they do is discussion. So discussion number one of nine comes next. And a lot of resources for discussion. And then I'll just scroll down. I'll come back to that in a minute. Discussion two of nine, three of nine, and then we're back in lecture, lecture number two of five. So, right, so the modules kind of list everything chronologically. Lectures, discussions, discussion, discussion, lecture, discussion, discussion. When we have spring break, that's listed down here. No class for Thanksgiving and, and things like that. Um, so this is, the, this is the module organization. The second level of organization would be um, assignment-based organization. Now, students, this is a class that is graded. It's not pass-fail. It's graded on the A to F scale. And there's 100 points in the class, and that means there's a bunch of assignments, and there's a lot of little tiny bite-sized assignments, and each assignment is worth five points to keep it real simple. Again, simplicity and directness and, and making sure that there's a, just a consistency to the whole structure of the class is important to us here. So keeping like bite-sized five-point assignments across the board is super important. So they're all listed here in the assignments section, which is, again, very nice and similar to that module organization, right? There's a heading, and you see all the assignments, and we title them with the number and the topic, and they're all in order, and they kind of always appear like that. Just little things like that, like even naming of these is really important. And you see when, when those assignments then get talked about, because each assignment is plugged into one of those modules, so we know that assignment number one, you're going to be discussing that in discussion number one of nine. It, gets, right, it might get a little tedious, but linking those things together is really important to us. Let me dive into one of these assignments just real quickly to let you see how they all look. And I'll pick, um, uh, let's see, I'll pick the uh, strengths analysis assignment because that's kind of a, a, a very detailed one. So one of the things we have the students do is um, they take an online sort of self-assessment quiz uh, from uh, this company. Uh, actually, it's a Gallup organization <coughs> that provides this uh, instrument called Strengths Quest that helps students identify five key strengths based on a series of questions. We can debate the psychological sort of efficacy of that, but it's a great reflective tool and it's a great way of, you know, an assignment to get students thinking about what they're doing here in college and, and how that connects to possible careers. So we, you know, we sort of need to wrap something like that into a career course. So here's the assignment where they do that, right? So I'll click in and show you what, what it looks like. Now, this is not what the students see. This is the editing view, so you only see this little tiny window. So let me, bear with me, and I'm just gonna drag this window out uh, so you can take a look at it, okay? So this is more like what the students see. We put some funny cartoons at the beginning. We have a, a little icon here that comes from the career initiative that links this to sort of the phase of your career exploration that you're in. Uh, and each assignment is organized with, first there's some readings, 
Then there's steps to complete, like numbered steps. We're making this very direct. Um, a list of bulleted tips to think about as you're completing the assignment. Some questions to guide the TAs and the career mentors when the discussion is happening. Okay, so and, th and this is more like our cheat sheet of good things that have worked in discussion in past semesters. You kind of load it up right into the assignment, so it's all there in one place. It's kind of our working memory of, of good things that come from the assignment. And then some resources to learn more. Um, and all of these resources for, at the beginning, the read this first and at the end to learn more, these are PDF files that are linked in right in Canvas. And they're all, so, you know, the, the career development theory behind the Strengths Quest instrument, and you can click right on it, and Canvas is very nice. It'll let, even let you look in line and bring up the PDF um, uh, file for that. Any second. You can see it's stored in a box file somewhere, right? But so there's all these article PDFs that are lurking behind the scenes. Now, it's a one credit class. There's probably 20 PDFs linked just to that one assignment. Each of those PDFs is an academic article of about 15 to 30 pages. The students aren't reading all of those. I know. <laughs> but what I like about this structure of organization is that it's there for them when they come back and they want to dig into that. Okay. And some of the students will. And this is the thing about a class like this, 150 students a semester to 200 students a semester. They're all approaching this. We've got freshmen, we've got seniors, we've got students from all different majors. They're all approaching this from a slightly different angle and slightly different needs. Some of the students are really in the introspection, reflection, what is my major going to be stage of, of career exploration. Some students, I have had students who are graduating seniors in very professional sort of <clears throat> oriented majors who you'd think would have a perfect line and done three internships already and they're saying, I'm still not sure how I'm presenting myself. And they really want to work on honing that presentation piece and everything in between. So we want to make sure there's all kinds of different information available for students to dig deeper if they want to. And this ends up being a resource. Remember, I mentioned that we've got TAs involved in this. We've got alumni involved in this. We've got career professionals and advisors from all over campus involved in this. We've got potentially other faculty from different, many different departments who are you know, viewing this and learning from this and taking information from this. This course and all the materials have to serve as sort of a super memory store as well for like everything we've learned and, and decided was of value that connects to this course. So it's, it's serving these sort of many purposes at once, right? It's the one credit course that students complete the assignments and they tick off the do the six steps. But it's also all the research and wisdom and arguments behind that for the next person who wants to take that one assignment, rip it out of our course, and, and put it in something that they're doing at the department level or at the program level somewhere else, right? We really want this to be sort of usable, so we want, it, want to make it dense, but also accessible. So those are the, the two kind of poles we're trying to, to work on. Um, students upload this stuff through Canvas uh, as, as text files or as PDF files or Word files. All that works very, very well. We love the Canvas grading and uploading system. We haven't had any glitches with that, really. That would be a different kind of discussion. So I, I want to show two more ways of organizing the material that I think students use. I think most students move through the material by looking through assignments. Some of them might have also figured out, and we show them this, but I don't know if they remember, that the syllabus function of Canvas also works very well to combine those two sorts of things, to show here's lecture happening, and then these three assignments are due on Sunday before 11.59 p.m. They all come in at 11.58 p.m. We were talking about that before. Um, then discussions happen during the week. I see all nine of our discussion sections, but students would see only their discussion section. That takes a little bit of setup in Canvas to make sure you put, plug every single discussion section into the calendar by hand. It's worth it, right, to, to make clarity. And then they see, ah, then the next assignment is due the next Sunday. So they know when everything is happening in sequence with dates attached to it with dates and times attached to it. That's super important. So the students always know that they can find the next thing happening in the course um, through the syllabus. And one more, students have this calendar function down here. We, again, we point them to it. It's hard for me to tell how, how well they're using that calendar because I don't know how many different Canvas courses they have or if they're seeing that. But in the calendar function, everything we do in the course, meetings like lecture and discussion and when assignments are due, and other accessory things, like they're having a career fair over in engineering or CALS. We want to put a notice of that and put that on our calendar, too. There's a, there's a special meeting with some alums on Thursday night, and there'll be pizza. We want to put a notice of that, too. So all the extracurricular activities are also sitting on this calendar. Again, my calendar looks really cluttered because I've got all nine discussion sections meeting every week 
students won't be quite that cluttered, but they can see on Sunday your assignment is due. On Wednesday, you're going to meet for lecture. And the next week on Monday or Tuesday, you're going to have your discussion. Right? So it's a, it's, again, it's right there for the students. Um, I, could sum up, I would sum up this strategy by saying, um, I'm, I'm not a Canvas expert. I just started using this last semester. And you know, this is pretty much the same course organization that we used last semester, just starting to hone it a little bit. Our philosophy was make use of all the organization tools we can because there's a lot of different information for a lot of different audiences here and we want to make it sensible and, and consistent and complete using each one of those tools. I think the only tool I didn't use in organization, you'll notice on the left hand side, this is my instructor's view, um, there's, a, there's a link for pages. Normally all the different pages you create in Canvas that lurk behind the scenes and can be linked into various places. You can just click on pages. I can do that right now, even though it's grayed out. And I can see my splash page, and I can click view all pages and see a list of all my pages. I don't make that list easily available to the students, because that, there's no order to that, right? It's, that's, just, that's just a bunch of stuff, right? I do let the students, they can go to the files, and they can link into the files as well. And they can see all the files behind the scenes. And I try to put those in sensible folders so it makes, some, again, some sort of organizational sense to students and anyone else who might stumble in there. But right, that's not how they're going to be engaging with the course material. Um, so I, even, I turned the pages thing off, and we never really talk about the files emphasis. We want them up here. We want them uh, going sort of week by week, or assignment by assignment, uh, or both week and assignment you know, time order. All of these things work chronologically and um, uh, and, and they work well together. And so I've been pleased with how Canvas lets us pull a complicated endeavor like this together. I think that's it.